previously on Mr. Fourth Programming. It's time to start dealing with the file handling. The file write API doesn't use just a basic string data blob for the output to the file, but a string list. Okay, now we have file properties. And now... Next, we're going to do just a few odds and ends of the miscellaneous file operations that we'll want so that we can delete files and make folders and stuff like that. Thanks to the convenience of scratch memory, this one is pretty easy to do. I just called the conversion to 16-bit strings and then called whatever Windows does to provide the exact same feature that I was trying to get. Uh, I didn't take a lot of care in thinking through what the rules are going to be on my function, so this isn't a perfect layer. A, a better layer would take the time to define the rules of things like the delete directory does delete directory mean it deletes any directory or does it have to be an empty directory uh, or d renaming a file does renaming a file allow you to change what the full path is or does it only rename the file in place in the current path the windows function will let me move it but maybe other operating systems won't and then i'll have to decide what the rule is in my code and if i have to either change the windows implementation to restrict it or change the operating systems that i'm implementing in the future to have additional work done to make it actually work in the full way that i spec'd out but i don't really have any pressing need to get these exactly pinned down and i don't have any operating systems to test against besides Windows, so I don't really know what the API constraints are that I'll be working with anyway. So I decided to just leave these fairly undefined, and when the time comes that we're relying on stuff like this, that's when we'll maybe care a little bit more and think it through more. But for now, I think we can get away with it being a little bit sloppy and just take a mental note that it is sloppy and it needs another pass. And with that, the only thing left to do is to build a file iterator, and the file API will be complete.
Getting file iteration can be a bit tricky, and what I've got here is something I've been relying on after refining the idea over a lot of iterations. Uh, something I tried a lot previously was passing in the, fi the file path that I wanted to inspect and then returning the list of all the files from that path. But that approach, even though it does lead to a single simple function interface, it has a lot of problems. It doesn't really let you incrementally get a couple of files at a time and start handling them while you, uh, you know, put to rest the iterator and resume it later. It doesn't let you do that kind of stuff. So if you ever have to do something in the background or handle really massive directories, it leads to issues there. If you ever want to search a, recur a directory recursively, that also doesn't work so well because you just end up having a lot pickier use of memory since every folder you have up the chain in the recursion keeps all of its children in a list rather than just the current state of its iterator. So you get a lot of win, I think, for switching from a list to an iterator. Another style uh, that I see and that I haven't tried so much is passing down a callback so that the loop inside of the single eight function call API uh, can be a simple loop like in the case of building a list, but instead of building a list, it calls the callback at each stage, and that way you can pass in different ways of handling the file files that show up in the list. But that kind of leads to a lot of similar problems. It doesn't have the issue of not being able to do things incrementally because you can early out from it if you design the callback interface right. And it isn't necessarily going to use as much memory, but it is going to be fairly complicated to do recursion. And I also just tend to find I don't like those kinds of APIs. They bother me. It just doesn't seem like I have as much control over what's going on. It's certainly more difficult to do things like save where you're at and resume, for instance. So I go with the iterator, and it turns out the underlying APIs tend to use an iterator too, so there's not as any like any difficult translation stuff that has to happen. Uh, to turn their thing into an iterator. The Win32 API for this is a little bit tricky too. Uh, it does a couple of odd things. The call that begins the iteration is also coupled with returning the first value from the iteration. I don't really like setting up my API that way, so I have to manually reorder things a little bit, save the value, and then return it later, and make sure I increment and to save results in sort of a intricate order. It's not too bad, but it's a little bit annoying. Another issue with it is it surprisingly doesn't actually let you pass in a folder. You have to pass in a pattern with a wildcard. So if you wanted to make one that just gives you all the fi name, file names inside of a folder, you actually have to take the path that you're interested in iterating through and append a slash and a star to it. So it's a little odd. I left this note here that I maybe want to make my Unicode conversion take string lists because then I could do this with an with one less buffer copy in the process. Uh, so we could that'd be kind of a nice thing to put on the to-do list of things to clean up in the future. Another thing about this API is when it's iterating the files in the directory, it counts the period and period period or dot and dot dot, which aren't actually files, but just links back to this directory itself and to the parent directory. And for the reasons I want to iterate the files, I'm not interested in these, so I have to filter them out explicitly. And then the last thing to know about this API is that when you start a find iteration, it allocates a little memory, and you have to use close find to release that memory. If you don't close the handle, you get a memory leak, even if your code isn't leaking any memory, because that handle is leaking memory. So that'll do it for files. There's quite a lot that went into files, reading and writing properties, all the miscellaneous operators for deleting and creating directories and all of that. And then finally, the file iterator. It's quite a lot, but we got it all. So next time we'll be moving on to something new.